Welcome back dear viewers. Um, so we've just had our daily du'as and that was a lovely um, start to the day and hope you enjoy that as well. We are now going to be introducing Brother Bilal Ali to the specialist where today's discussion that we're going to be having is about adolescent brain development um, and there's a lot of hot topics going on at the moment um, in the media. Um, so first, Islam alaikum Brother Bilal. Salam. Welcome again. Thanks another another thanks morning. For inviting me. Another morning and another discussion. Um, oh yeah. Oh yeah. So I've been reading recently about actually about you know um, talking about letting teenagers start um, school college later, mm -hmm. um, 10 a.m. because they're not programmed to sort of have um, early morning starts and um, and it's affecting their you know their mental health their their, their productivity um, and then also being aware that in some European countries children don't start school till seven years old um, yeah. and obviously yeah. Europe being our neighbours it's quite different from the UK isn't it. Um, what do you think in terms of development for children? What is your sort of personal perspective on, on how we should be nurturing our ad the adolescent brain and getting the best out of? That's a, that's a really interesting question, you know, Sister Zara. That's a really interesting question. I think that we have to look at the educational system. Mm -hmm. So we're in Britain. So the educational system in Britain was devised, what, 50 years ago, what, 100 years ago, yeah. what, 100 years ago plus. And what was the reasoning behind the mm. educational system coming together? Um, for example, in the, in the Muslim world, we're, we're, we're told um, as Muslims that, you know, we should seek knowledge as far as, as China. And we're told in the Quran, Ikra, read. And there's yeah. all these different things about, about um, gaining knowledge. Mm -hmm. We gain develop, um, gain, we gain specialisms or we just gain insights. Is it to become a more productive member of the society? Is it to work towards... Um, reaching your goal, your spiritual goal, and um, reaching uh, you know, the ultimate, reaching Jannah, mm -hmm. inshallah, and be able to help people along the way, and, and whatever the case may be, and take care of your responsibilities. But in the um, in the West, is a different the, the educational system that we've inherited is a different reason. Right. It's come out of the industrial um, revolution or response to the industrial revolution, um, and so we have education on an industrialized level. So it's not right. about um, there isn't no, there isn't that much time to work out who is, uh, or wasn't that much time to work out who's a kinetic learner, who learns by touch, who learns by sound, who learns by visuals and yeah. things of this nature. It needs to be uniform because why? Um, the factory needs to open at nine and it needs to shut at five. So we need to condition these people to be able to gain a certain level of literacy, numeracy, so that they can provide certain functions in the factory and kind of like when the whistle goes, break for lunch, yeah. when the peeps go, go to your next lesson. Um, when the, you know, so it's about, it's, it means it's been very um, uh, productive. Yeah. You know, it's been, it's, it's been being built. I'm not just critiquing it. No. Um, I'm, I'm analyzing it and saying, it's, you know, quite competent people that, that put this together. However, but it's not one size fits all, though, is it? That's where the prop. Yeah. That's where well, that's where we have um, the challenge because yeah. there's so many different types of um, people in terms of learning approaches, yeah. in terms of, um, as you said, well, infer. I, I kind of infer that maybe the children are starting to to go to school too early. You know, there's some yeah. Islamic literature that says you know you shouldn't really teach children until they're seven. Just let them let them play yeah. a bit. You know, just start drilling stuff into them so yeah. so early. I know we're an organism, but there's you know there's only so much you can kind of kind of take and you burn yeah. people out. I mean, know? we're seeing obviously with the um, adolescent, you know, age um, and how people learn um, at schools, they're not, you know, like you said, there's such different methods and we're, we're learning more and more how, yeah. how children react and respond to different methods mm -hmm. of learning. So mm -hmm. we still haven't updated our techniques of how to um, I guess give that deliver that um, you know that definitely new definitely we could learn that as a Muslim community I mean yeah. you watch some of the methods in terms of um, and this is no slight but you know you watch those film footage of children Aleph Bar oh, and yeah. you know like giving them you know like oh kinda, I had that as a child you know and I kind of I, I kind of wonder as a, as a student of psychology yeah. um, that I fear about well I see apart from it just being unkind yeah. but what about you know yeah. you're learning Arabic you're learning the Book of Allah and that you know pain is inflicted are you you're going to get like a kind of classical condition like an aversion or you know yeah, there's yeah. a you know negative association so you know that's that's kind of that's kind of worrying but um you know children are so unique mm -hmm. and the, the point of the matter is that everybody learns learns differently and some people are geniuses but they never get to access yeah. that because yeah. their learning style wasn't discovered and you know it's a shame it's a it's a it's a loss for them but also a loss for the for the community and, and i think you're right because if, if we're looking at a sort of a, an industrial um 
based education compared to sort of Islam, which is, you know, spiritual, religious, all of these sides of, you know, of a religion that embraces a human beings, um, you know, holistically mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. and completely, that we're not really reaching our potential where we don't focus on our spiritual development. We think about, right, I need to read this book, and that's my definition of success when I've graduated from a particular university with a particular degree, a particular profession. But actually, that's probably not even touching base on the rest of us that, you know, perhaps we could have gone through the years of school and really, you know, sort of been able to um, investigate what other options were available to us rather mm -hmm. than this industrial version. Um, and I think young adults, they, they are struggling with that, aren't they? Of that identity in terms of what do they, what is best for them? Do they go towards sort of this religion and more about where their strengths are, focus mm -hmm. on that? Mm -hmm. Or do they go for what we are programmed in school, right? Get the grades, get those, you know. What would you say as a, as a psychotherapist? I, I, I see that um, a balance, the mizan, mm. is what really would work because there's a, the need for the, the psycho-spiritual development of the individual but also we're living in a, in, in a particular, say for example, those of us living in the West, we're living in particular types of societies where you know, competence and productivity mm. does have its place. I mean, it has its place everywhere, but in yeah. a, I mean in a particular way. Yeah. It has it, and um, you know, so in terms of meeting our responsibilities, for example, just looking at the brothers, young men who become, I mean, young boys who be, are going to become men, they're gonna have specific economic responsibilities yes. as men when they, they yeah. grow up and become married. Um, so you know, there's there's that element, there's that element to it. So I, I I've, I've you know looked at some older literature and um, looked at some models in, say, for example, West Africa, where even when people were studying to become what we would use the term nowadays clerics, yeah, right, that they would also be taught a trade, a right. specific trade, yeah. something specific, shoemaking, blacksmith, whatever it was, but some particular trade that. As well as being a cleric, there was a kind of, uh, um, you know, they, they had a skill yeah. that were related to, to becoming, a, um, you know, employable or, yeah. or being an entrepreneur. And that, I think that means that that person was free to be a cleric as, or, you know, as mm. a full vocation and a spiritual calling. Or they just had that knowledge and insight and could benefit people yeah. themselves as well. But they were maybe the, um, the, the local tradesmen as well. Mm. So do you think, um, cause something that's really always been interesting in, in, you know, during my travels is seeing how the West um, has a, a, you know, their attitude towards children, and yeah. development of children, mm -hmm. and then the East where you know, struggles, war, poverty, third world countries, um, their attitude is very different. So you know, you'll see more child labor on the streets, it's mm -hmm. very obvious there. And, and the disparity between the two regions in the world, are we sort of, not strictly East and West, but mm -hmm. Do you think that there's more work to be done on that side of the world to understand children need? Or is it a right attitude to say, you know what, just get up and get on with it? It's not, you know, so do we mollycoddle our children on this side? Or do you think there's a, it's something, are we too soft or are we, are we too strict on that side? I think that there's something, there's a, there are benefits. Um, you know, I mean, a few hundred years ago in this country, um, as much as Britain may boast of being, you know, bastion of democracy and, mm. and, and, and or, or things of this nature, you know, everybody's developing. Everybody, every, every country is a developing country um, because it wasn't that long ago they mm. were sending ch children up chimneys in, yeah. and, and you know, a whole Dickensian thing and, and um, you know, children yeah. begging in the streets and whatever. So I think that Britain has done a good job yeah. and many Western countries have done a good job with things like, um, you know, it's inherent now in, if you work in institutions that involve children, there's all, you know, safeguarding and child yeah. protection legislation. So I think those are good things. I think yeah. that there's no shame in Muslim societies learning from from those yeah. things i don't think we should be egotistical as muslims because there were it was there was a time when we were setting the pace and other yeah. people was learning from us and i think that what enabled um, muslim societies to um, develop mm. and, and reach certain heights was they, they come in they were muslims came into contact with other civilizations and were able to kind of absorb that knowledge and kind of integrate it into, in, into the Islamic mm. world as opposed to seeing it as that's kafir knowledge and this is yeah. the Islamic halal knowledge and that stays over there. It was a way of kind of, you know, critiquing stuff yeah. and integ integrating mm. what could be, could be useful. So I think there is some, some benefit mm. um, definitely in, in, in learning from some of the structures in terms of child protection and, and safeguarding of children. Because mm. they are vulnerable. Children are vulnerable. Yes, they are. Children are vulnerable and they do need protecting in yeah. that way. So I think that's, that's definitely commendable in mm. the West, the part of the West.
It's it's quite sad because when you you know you see children on the streets and you know it's the wisdom they've learnt through you know their difficult life already that mm -hmm. they've gone through and and you know I often look at them and think do you have teenager tantrums because or you're not allowed to have them because you are you allowed that luxury are you allowed that luxury <laughs> absolutely and here we say well you know do they need to start at 10 a.m. and you know oh he's having a ten temper tantrum because he's he's a teenager now and we give so much there's so many excuses to teenagers here that you know and and. You know, it's probably a, a good thing for them because we're understanding that, you know, hormones you, are... You, you said teenager tantrums. And, you know, what's interesting is that there's um, research that's come out. It's been, you know, been, it's mm. been the body of evidence has been building for a while. But, you know, talking about, you know, adolescent brain development and, it, you know, the research is showing that, you know, children, mm -hmm. um, I think probably around the age of six, the brain is fully developed, about 90% developed. Right. Right, into to its entirety. Um, in terms of his weight and size, whatever. But in terms of the connections, in terms of brain connections, that hasn't developed and certain parts of the brain hasn't fully yeah. um, developed yet. So you have this part of the, the brain which is called the amygdala mm -hmm. and that's a more kind of um, emotion-driven, impulse-driven, um, aggression-driven um, part of the brain. And it's, about, it's one of the first parts of the brain that develops. Um, hence the, you know, te terrible twos and these different things right. of tantrums and yeah. impulsiveness and being emotional. Then there's the um, prefrontal cortex, which is the, the kind of critical brain, the brain that deals with judgment, analysis, um, abstract thinking and, and things of that nature. And that doesn't um, fully develop until something like the mid-20s. Wow. So what wow. happens is, although it exists, but put in stressful situations or you know, when um, yeah. there's not, let's say, not time to think or, yeah. if, you know, rapid situations that um, the teenagers often, their thought processes often revert to the amygdala, to the emotional brain. So, yeah, think of it as a thinking brain and a feeling brain. So they work off of the, you know, the feeling brain a lot. And that's right. why teenagers can be, a, 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 you know, subject to, or partly this explains, partly yeah. this explains, because there's a kind of neurological element, yeah. there's an environment element, there's a yeah. socialising element, there's yeah. all these different yeah. elements of the, the individual's personal psychological makeup as well. Some people are more introvert, extrovert, or, you know, different, yeah. in, in agreeable, disagreeable type of personality traits. But um, it basically gives us some insight into why teenagers can be impulsive, can be subject to mood swings, <laughs> can be, um, you know, outraged and, you know, yeah. you know, take danger because risk yeah. and risk risk taking behaviors yeah. as well is 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 is, is um and from a neurological point of view is quite um characteristic it's no it's from a neuro from a neurological perspective it's like not surprising that teenagers are risky because they're kind of in a way you could say breaking away from the identity of the parent yes and de developing their own, own identity. life experiences and their own um identity and like I said, neurologically, they, 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 they're kind of wired to be risky because it, it makes sense that they're going to discover the world. If they don't take risks, is that, so there's an element of it that's healthy, yeah. but there's an element of it that gives parents, caregivers, elders palpitations mm -hmm. when they find the type of behaviours that sometimes teenagers are in, 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 you know, and adolescents are involved in. Yeah, it's interesting that um, in some ways, the way that you're explaining, it, you could see it as a as a positive because they've got the environment where they can express themselves and, yeah. and and that may be to an adult you know temperamental maybe you know mood swings here and there unpredictable but it allows a child to give that expression and, and at that point at that age perhaps that's what they need um although it's it's very difficult to tolerate from, mm -hmm. a, from mm -hmm. an adult perspective mm -hmm. but then because then you like i said we, when we look at children that are under you know go for through child um you know labor and they they don't have that luxury of, you know, someone comforting them, saying, yeah, go and have a t temper tantrum. It's okay because, you know, perhaps they're orphaned or perhaps they've gone mm -hmm. through, you know, a war's issue. Or well, the environment would how not accommodate, that, the social environment would not accommodate. Would not how how does that impact a child's development in that side of the world where perhaps they've, they've gone through a war and, you know, and, and what happens to all those mood swings and the emotional um, sort of centre of the brain that you're, you're referring to in, in, mm -hmm. in sort of a mm -hmm. healthy, normal child who's not gone through any major... Um, It'd be interesting to look at the research in that mm. because as much as um, how can it, there's, there's different factors that affect the brain. So in terms of what stage a person, it's not just age, but what stage of puberty they're at. So in terms right. of the chemicals, the hormones that are being released in the body. Mm. But I'm thinking about diet. 
mm. in terms of certain societies, what type of diet that yeah. a child in terms of nutrition, do they have sufficient nutrition? Yeah. Is that going to affect their in one way or another? Is that going to impact also um, uh, maybe like brain development yes. as well because of what people's exposed to? Like, what's the impact of trauma on the brain? Yeah. We know at least we we're clear about what trauma does to the mind. The mind is a kind of unseen element, right? That, yeah. um, uh, the unknow the kind of unknowable part, but we know parts of it. Um, how is that impacting? Does it inhibit their growth? Exactly. Um, yeah, uh, people's, I, I'm thinking, is it arrested development? Yeah. Like people stunt, like stunted, basically yeah. on a certain and on a certain level. But Allah has created people that you know the, the human being in such a magnificent way that yeah. even being born in an environment and exposed to an environment like that, it will still produce. Um, outstanding individuals with yeah, outstanding stories. Definitely. So even the environment and yeah. all the factors which seem like this person shouldn't, shouldn't to our knowledge, but yeah. Allah knows best, right? Like sometimes remarkable individuals absolutely. come from environments like that. It's, it's fascinating. I, it is absolutely. And I think you, we can't, that's the beautiful thing about the human being. We don't know who's going to excel in the circumstances they're put in. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I, I was having a conversation recently about... Um, somebody's, um, you know, their spouse, and they were saying that, you know, in their childhood, um, the father was absent, um, and the mother was very, because she had to cope with a lot, very emotionally absent. Mm -hmm. So this, this spouse, um, a husband of a friend of mine, um, he, the way he dealt with emotional issues was just to switch off and, and detach and not discuss things. Mm -hmm. And it was interesting to hear what his childhood was like, that that impact of the parents, and perhaps that had affected him, that now he couldn't, express himself so um, openly because he wasn't allowed to as a child and um, there was no output for him to tell his mother how he felt mm -hmm. without the father and, and it's amazing how if we don't check in with ourselves with our mental health with you know our reactions and actions as an adolescence you know going on from that into adulthood we could have lifelong implications of, sure. of not normal abnormal sure. behaviours, couldn't we, yeah. which impact others then around us. So it's, it doesn't have to be extreme. I mean, I'm using extremes. I've seen those children um, in sort of, you know, quite dire situations and your heart goes out to them. But in, even in our society, there's so much that can, you know, that d does affect us. But we've got to, would you say that would be the best way to sort of always tune into yourself? And That's what we call those years, the formative years, isn't yeah. it? Because it's almost like um, that is where the individual personality is being formed. Um, there's another saying, um, I remember one of my, my clinical supervisors saying is that the, um, the child is the parent of the adult. So in other words, the experiences that we go yeah. through as a child kind of inform us the kind of an individual that you have as an adult. Right. Just yeah. a, a, a kind of like graphic example is that child that was raised in poor surroundings mm. and poverty and has a chance to make a good living for themselves, sometimes can be over ostentatious yeah. because they can remember, they, yeah. you know, they're kind of yeah. rebelling against that, yeah. that lack of. Yeah. So everything's about abundance and, yeah. hey, you Stop know, this, this defines my, my yeah. self-esteem because yeah. I remember those days of being, being, you know, elbowed over somebody's nice car or, you know, kind of sure. cast, cast aside as, as invaluable. So, you know, yeah. it's, it's, it's childhood is key. Yeah. Adolescent development is key and, um, you know, be a little bit patient, be a little bit understanding, but that doesn't mean we accept the unacceptable, but that little bit of sober with, yeah. the, uh, with the young people. So we have to end it there, we've gone over time. Thank you so much. Um, the wonderful point again, sober with young people, um, showing them compassion as much as they might drive us up the wall. Um, <laughs> bless them. Um, but thank you so much and pray for a blessed day for you ahead. Exactly. And uh, that's all we have time for at the moment. So we're gonna head over to the kitchen, um, favorite part of my show as well. Um, and we're gonna join Fahima and Sana.